welcome, welcome, welcome to the Trap Bootcamp Podcast. I am your host, Kawana OJD Lewis, and this is my co-host, y'all already know. Hey, hey. Today, we are celebrating the men, particularly men who have beat the odds and designed a life that they wanted. Trap mates, I need you to welcome Ramiro Guzman. Hello, hello. Hey, hello, everybody. <laughs> All right, Ramiro. Mainly women, hello, women. Yeah, he's definitely going to say hello to the women. We know that. <laughs> All right, Ramiro's been a dear friend of mine for many, many years, and we've had... Put a number to that. Shit. Uh, eight? Eight? It seems eight. like more than eight, mm-hmm. right? We put some, we're family, okay? Is, and I've witnessed his success, and I learned a great deal about his story over, year, over the years, and I just thought he'd be an interesting person for us all to really learn about. He's got a dynamic personality, and... He's got some very interesting <laughs> views on relationships and, and I, life, life yes, in general. And I just thought that it was important for us to celebrate your ways instead of like, and, and try to understand them because I know a lot of women, like we have a certain mindset mm. when it comes to relationships and meeting you, you were very honest and that's what I loved about him. He was very honest and very fly. So, appreciate that, appreciate that. Yeah, so, um, yeah, we're going to have a good time today. just to on that, it's the same way for men as well. What do you mean? Meaning relationships with men and women. You know what I mean? Women have certain expectations, set thoughts. Men have the same. So, you know, anyway, that's just a tad bit on that. But that's good. Yeah. But, I, no, that's the, I want to open that up. Let's open it up because I really want to know a little bit about Yeah, tell you us more about from. that. Yeah. yeah. So, born and raised in a city called Joliet, Illinois. That's south of Chicago by, I don't know, 25, 30 minutes. Um... Uh, shit, born there, um, first generation Mexican-American, you know, I got Mexican background and Spanish background, mother came to this country at 14 from Mexico, had me at 16, wow. uneducated, can't speak English, struggled like a motherfucker, mm-hmm. but here we are drinking Louis the 13th with you two yes, beautiful women. Yes, yes, I need y'all to know we drinking <laughs> Louis the 13th now. So I, I, was, I wasn't going to drink, but when he said he had Louis, I was like, uh, yeah, uh, wait a minute, we got to do this. And well, because you're my buddy, so I can't fucking half-step with oh, you. Oh, you never half-step. Yeah, everybody's now. <laughs> Good job. Um, so, yeah, so born and raised in Chicago. Um, mother came to this country, like I said. And fast forward, I mean, just a quick background. I mean, you might not be able to tell because I've run around these streets. I was like, you a rapper, you're a producer. No, electrical engineer with an MBA in project management and construction. What do you tell people when they ask you what you do? Uh, I would tip- guess that, actually. Tip- totally. <laughs> <laughs> typically, typically, I tell them I'm a dolphin trainer. Or, or um, what was the one I said to you? A bus driver. Bus driver, that's yeah, right. Yeah, a bus driver. Which, like, hey, but all the dolphin trainers and bus drivers love you guys. <laughs> <laughs> He's so ridiculous. I was like, what wait a minute. What kind of bus is there in Chicago? Like, what's going on? I'm Everybody saying. Everybody got metro buses and whatnot. Come on, I'm man. saying. I get some research, and in the late 80s, statistic, well, statistically, gun violence was, like, extreme there. Yeah. You know what I mean? And yes. I know that you came from Chicago. So what was it like in that time for you? Like, semi-automatic um, guns was hot. Everything was going down. Well, I mean, right now we talk about there's a pandemic with COVID, right? Mm-hmm. I mean, there's been a pandemic with bullets in Chicago since I can remember. Um, two quick stories that are just crazy but are true. My first witness to, no, I didn't witness it, but my first situation with noticing um, somebody with gun violence, a good friend of mine at age 14 was shot by his own cousin. What? And, How? Um, well, you know, they got hands on guns. And they thought they were cool, you know, want to join gangs and shit. We're trying to practice with each other. I accidentally went off, shot him in the chest dead. So one day you're at school, the next day they're ditching, the third day they're at a funeral. And I'm like, fuck, that's crazy, yo. Mm-hmm. But here's the more fucked up thing to that story. So cousin shoots him. The kid's name, let's just call him E. And then the day of the funeral, we had a ditch party for school. And the cousin was looked at like, cool, right? So all the girls wanted to fuck him. All the dudes because wanted to be like, somebody? listen to me. And all the dudes wanted to be like, join our gangs. If you can take out a cousin and you can live through it, you can do wow. anything. Whoa. That's the fucked up mentality there. You know what I mean? Yeah, wow. yeah, yeah. So at 14, I had to sit there. First funeral I went to. Fast forward to me being older. Another second fucked up stories. We're leaving the club. You know, you leave the club like LA, it's 2 a.m., everybody's by lane, trying to holler at girls, get home. It's clubs close at 5, 6 o'clock Chicago, so it's about that time. And I'm sitting there, I'm the young one in the crew, so I gotta go get the cars, valet the cars, and drive and do all that shit, right? Mm-hmm. 
because I wasn't even old enough to be in a club at age 16, let alone be drinking <laughs> but you, and but driving. You were there. Right. <laughs> the, and then the more fucked up story was I'm pulling up the car and I'm getting out trying to holler at this chick, and all I hear in the background is the dude say, I'm an undercover cop, an undercover cop. Blasted him. This dude steals Whoa. this dude steals this undercover cop's rover in front of everyone, sees it, dude's laid out on the street, and everyone at the club looks at it and just goes back to hollering at girls like nothing happened. That's the fucked up mentality there. You know what I mean? Growing oh up in that God. bullshit. <laughs> Is that what is that what made you make the move back to? Well, school? I mean, I say this to people: is like you're a product of your environment. I truly believe that. So, if you mm-hmm. want to change yourself, get the fuck out of your environment. Mm-hmm. Yeah. It's that simple. Yeah, that's true. That's so, true. what I started doing was, yeah, all my friends did what they did and this and that, and I always knew that I wanted to go to school and have the long term money mm-hmm. and have the long term effect. And yeah, I always knew I wanted to get the fuck out of Chicago. Mm-hmm. As soon as I could, I was out because I knew that I needed to change myself to better How myself. How old were you when you came here? Twenty five. So I had finished my engineering degree, my MBA, and I started making good money. And I was hanging out with my friends that were making illegal money. So I was still looked at like I was making illegal money, even though I wasn't. Yeah, and, then I'm like, like it. and I'm like, I'm out, I'm out, I'm out. So like, I'm like, and then I moved to, luckily my mother, who worked for Wrigley Gum Factory, she ended up getting her shit together. She ended up leaving me and I was raised by my grandma and I'm coming back getting her shit together. That's a whole other podcast. Mm, yeah. About, we, you know, we, being we, raised by the mom. we're going to do that podcast because yeah. I like... I love to get deep into his mind when it comes to him because that I think that's why we're good friends still. Yeah, because yeah. you're very interesting. You're not just shallow, a shallow person. You've got so much depth. And so- My saying is always be well-rounded so no one ever finds your edge. And being oh, well-rounded okay. is be dabbling a lot. Read, go to museums, go to the hood, go to the strip club, go to a fancy restaurant, mm-hmm. all that shit, you know? Yeah. But anywho, so mom moves to, mom gets a nice job in Chicago and they move her out to the West Coast, L.A., Phoenix, and all that. Because back then, what was happening was a lot of manufacturing was shutting down, and they were sending it to Mexico. Cheaper mm-hmm. labor, uh, cheaper all that shit. Mm-hmm. So she spoke Spanish and English. So that was her in to be in that management role to go shut down these facilities. And she's like, man, we're moving to the West Coast. I'm out. And I'm like, whatever. Having that mindset of I'm still here, and I have you know, I have girlfriends and cars and different shit. And I still remember to this day, I came to visit her and my three siblings, two sisters, one brother. I went snowboarding and swimming in the same day in Phoenix. I'm like, fuck Chicago. Wow. And I moved the next week. I left everything. You were done with it. I left everything. That's left the job, left everything. Just moved with one bag and figured really? it out. Really? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Because I was That's I, what, if I didn't pull that trigger, I would have been, no, nah, why are you, why you leaving, bro? Like, yeah, well, yeah, you yeah, got yeah. this lease for a year. Yeah, you know? everybody would have been on your back. Like, oh, hang out with us. Don't you want to go? You yeah, wanna you, go? I, why are you leaving us? You know, the snack. So I literally left my car, sold them. I just told my cousins, y'all sell them. Left the one year lease. I signed out. I'm, out. I'm done. I'm just done. I heard that. <laughs> I heard wait, that. wait, how did you get into electrical engineering? Because it's like, I feel like there's a big thing missing in between these okay. two. Okay, that's the story. And then, you know. Well, I'm 16 years old, and girls be like, let's go to the movies. Like, fuck that, let's go to the club. Well, what do you mean? Ah! I know the owner. Why go to the it. movies for? Let's go hang out till 3 in the morning, and then yeah, go to school I and figure it, it out. I so I got into electrical engineering that way by setting up all their equipment and wow. stuff. So when I went to school, I knew how to put things apart, take things together. And then I always grew up. Fucking around with race cars, video games, and then I went to school in that regard. It was like, is that what when you when you were doing that? Did you say, you know what, engineered, or did someone say, hey, engineering is what you should do? Well, it kind of clicked, but my grandma raised me, and this is what I'll, I'll never forget: love her to death. Grandma Clementine, still alive, ninety three years old, still All packs right, a pistol. Clementine, shout out to Grandma Clementine. Still packs a pistol, and if you can do pictures of your podcast, I'll show her in the background. She's a G. Still packs a pistol. I'll take a sip of liquor once in a great while if I'm around. But anyway, <laughs> Grandma Clementine's like, I'm raising you, but I don't speak English. I speak Spanish, but the world speaks math. So I'm going to teach Ooh. you math. Oh, your grandma is cold for that So one. she's like, everyone speaks money. So at age four or five, I was already doing addition, subtraction, multiplication, division, fractions, all that shit. Mm-hmm. So engineering kind of goes hand in hand with math. Wow. So I didn't know I was going to go electrical route, but I knew I was going to go engineering route just because yeah. of the math aspect. Mm-hmm. So I go to fifth. I'm five years old. I go to kindergarten. I don't speak English. My very first day, I get to a fight with a kid. And they're like, what the fuck you do? And I'm like, I don't know, he's all with my girl. He was saying hi. I'm like, I don't speak the language. They're like, he ain't dumb. He knows math. He just don't speak English. That's y'all job to teach him that. So they tested me. You don't speak English? No, I ain't speak. Spanish is my first language. Wow. English is my I se- would never <laughs> have known that. That's yeah. crazy. I didn't know that, Ramiro. I'm serious. Mm-hmm. I didn't know that. English, I'm, I'm sorry. English is my second language, yeah. So yeah. I speak Spanish, English, and body language. Three languages, you know what uh, I mean? Like so, fast forward, that's what got me into electrical engineering. <laughs> Not only the electrical part from doing my dad's shit, but then my grandma being like, math is universal language. Yeah, yeah. In engineering, you gotta be good at math and numbers and shit like yeah, that. For sure. Do you remember when you came to my house and you had the, your glasses on and my grandmother was there? Yep. And she was like, ooh, pit bull. 
No. That's her and your favorite. Mama. And your mama. mama. Yeah, my mom loves him. But my grandmother is that's her favorite artist. Really? Yes, and she was like, is that people? <laughs> like, yes, it is. Mr. Armando, shout out to him. I know Armando. I've met him before. A cool cat. But I'm just taller than he. That's just it. We both fly. I mean, we both fly. Um, to answer your question, it, it, it really spans from the following. It's like, Versace's my favorite designer, hands down. And the reason because, let me give a quick plug, is pa uh, Pac and Biggie. You guys see Biggie behind me, right? I'll see it. You see so, it. you know, I grew up with hand-me-downs. That's real shit. Like, my grandma obviously was poor, and she raised me. So all my cousins, I know that I was at her crib. So I had older cousins here, hand-me-down, 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 hand-me-down. Great. Okay, cool, whatever. I'm wearing something. And you always like, damn, I can't ever have my own shit. So, you know, as a kid, I'm like, I'm going to get my own shit one day, and da-da-da-da-da. Because all my <laughs> shit was going to be baggy. Exactly, or I know. Holy or whatever, right? Yeah. And then when I used to sit there as a teenager, give or take, and watch Biggie be Versace the fuck out and be a mm -hmm. fat dude and be like, fuck you, I'm fat, but I'm mm -hmm. hot. I'm like, dude, I'm poor, but I'm going to be hot one day. <laughs> and so Versace's always been in my brain embedded since that. And then obviously Pog did the walk with them. He, does, he did whatever, whatever. This is a 1992 Versace. The other thing is that shit is priceless. So you kids out there that want to go get some shit that's going to flip, meaning that, okay, um, rock aware is hot. Boom, done, flip, right? Uh -huh. Saint John's hot. Boom, done, flip. Versace is going to be hot forever, forever, I think. Forever, forever. This forever. Italian silk will never fade. It will never crack, just like black. That's yeah. right, baby. That's right. I got my no Sachi on, you know. But, um, anyway, so to answer that question. <laughs> 21 on. But to answer the question, I think just being broke and like Biggie, the same shit. Just wanting better for yourself and envisioning it, right? Mm -hmm. Like thinking about it and watching those. And that's when videos were videos. You're in a music game, right? Yes. Right now, videos are so clowny. It's like some dude in a car. Yeah. And fucking with 10 bitches shaking ass. Right. They used to make a fucking movie that was yeah. five minutes. Yeah. In yeah. In boats being chased in Versace that's shirts. So anyway. And, but, it, but did that. That right there it was like, did you write down your story, like what you wanted to do? Did you say, you know what, this is the story, this is what, this is who I'm gonna be, this is what I'm gonna do? Like, did you have you a know, plan? Like, back in the day, you didn't have like the vision boards or you didn't have like different things like that, you know what I mean? Right, that my was, goal, we, we weren't taught that, yes, they were there, but we weren't taught you know what, that. you're right, yeah, and yeah, the yeah, minority yeah. facts weren't taught that, right? Right, um, no, what I did though, know, know that I graduated in 1999 in high school. And that's a big deal for people like us where I come yeah. from. None of my cousins graduate high school. You know what I mean? They're still hustling now at age 45, wow. 50. So my gift to me was when I graduated, me and my homies drove all the way to Miami. And the first thing I did went to that Versace store. That was my gift to me. And that jacket you he saw me like, wearing. He was like, I'm going to spend my money. Yep. Mm -hmm. so I saved up my shit and shot down. That jacket you saw me on was straight Versace. I've always had that piece since I've been fuck. 17, 18, and I'll still wear it tomorrow. And people will still be like, that it, shit's it, hard. It's fly. Jacket. It's fly. The jacket, the jacket is fly. And the thing is, like, we were in the valley at, yes. like, Club Dakota or something Some like shit. that. But I was just kind of like, what is this guy doing here? He, I need to yeah, see like, what he's talking about. Let me find out what he's talking about. And it was so interesting because also, the another reason why he's on this show is this is right after I had lost weight. I was in the beginning of my fitness journey. I had just lost weight, and I was really understanding who I was. And you was a little self-conscious about I was yourself. very right. self-conscious. Yep. But one thing I loved about you is when he met me, the first thing he said was something about my body. And I was like, okay, bitch. <laughs> and I, I've never, I've never had anyone say, oh, you, like you fine or like, you know, anything about my you body just before that. You on your ass in these jeans. Well, that's because this is the new me. <laughs> this is the new me. But what back then, know? like I didn't have that self-conscious uh, confidence. I've built that over the yeah, years. But yeah. he met me in a time where I was just kind of like exploring my self-confidence yeah. and liberating myself. You I was transitioning. I was good. definitely transitioning, but it was, it was, to me, it was more like a friend is, mm -hmm. he was, he was, mm -hmm. he was saying, look, like, look, like celebrate yourself. Yeah. yeah. Like that's another reason why I want to celebrate him because as a friend, he was like, yo, you need to celebrate yourself. Look at, look at this beautiful thing. Like he didn't know where I really came from. Well, let, yeah. let me interject. Let me interject. Because I got to remember this nickname I would call you. Because, like, because you show me pics and stuff. Yeah. And that's when I was like, no, wear this black dress with these black heels and all this sheerness, yeah. this and this and that. Yeah. Cause, yeah. Because you used to be, I was, I would call you Fatty Pie. <laughs> <laughs> He's like, Mike, stop being a fatty pie like you was <laughs> right. and change that mentality, yo. The only yo. reason why he would say that is because I would be wearing, I would be trying to wear fatty pie clothes. Well, yes. Y'all, we are not body shaming no. anyone. No. But, but for me, it was just like, hey, come on. Like, you're not her anymore. That's what I would say. Like, stop yes. having a fatty pie mentality. Yes. And celebrate I would, the hard work. Celebrate it. Show it off. And I'd be like, 
Actually, but, I was, I did start to be a little bit more revealing because I was like, well, okay, I thought, you know, someone. And I think that helped you in your life leave from singing to rapping to talking to men differently to a lot of yeah, different shit. You know it what did. I mean? Yeah. I think a lot of our adventures, like going places, like going to the strip club and like. That's fun. We have so <laughs> much fun. Like all of the time we go, we go out, take me, took me to Mastro's and mm. Yamashiro's places mm. that I've never been. And not to say not, not as a friend, just like, Hey, you deserve this kind of stuff. As a friend. No, seriously. Yeah. Yeah. Seriously. Yeah. 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 Sam, you We're my friend now. Friends. I'll take you exactly. out the kitchen. Exactly. And, and he will. He'll be like, hey, I'm on the street. What you want to do? I'm, I'm hanging out tonight. It's Friday. And I'll be like, yeah, get dressed. Put something cute on. Like, yep. Okay. I always say put And we would just hit the street. And it was Love so it. fun. It Love was fun it. because it made me feel like, okay, he's not only, he's not trying to like, hey, what's up, girl? Give yeah, me something. Yeah. He's yeah. like, no. I, like, he was showing me game. Yeah. He was showing me game in the I streets. Got, he was showing me game like as, as like a person that had more money. Do you guys like, money? recognize the hustle within each other at the beginning? Is that maybe why For you sure. guys connected? Yeah, 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 because, yeah, yeah. you know, um, I, I'm going to tap into a story about somebody that, that was like similar. Reminds me of you, and then I'm, I'm answering that question. But I'm going to go back to that. Um, I personally believe, I love women, hands down. Every woman, I think, has value in this world. Mm -hmm. Big, tall, small, whatever. But most dudes are sitting there like, oh, look at this chick. You know, she might be overweight she might be this she might be that i'm gonna go talk to her and they'd be like you're a weirdo like why no like how you doing today everyone in this world needs a hug first and foremost right. fuck the yeah. bullshit i love that needs I a love hug. That. everyone needs a hug and needs this ready i love you by the way oh, and i love you by the way <laughs> why can't you say that to people yeah i mean i don't even know you i met you for 10 minutes you're walking around the yeah, crib we're talking shit and i called you amy just to fuck with you <laughs> twice you know what I mean? you said it twice but the second time the second time was joking. Joking. yeah but um so to fast forward on that tip when i first moved here 10 years ago and then uh, real quick, I'm not, you know, like I said, always honest, I'm married to my wife for four years, actually, this past, like, three days ago. I forget mm -hmm. my fucking anniversary. I, don't even know. I ain't gonna lie to you. She you don't did, give a fuck. You did not forget your anniversary. I remembered, I remembered, okay, you know, I mean, but I forgot, but I remembered, you know. But anywho, fast forward, I've been with her ten years. So when I get to L.A., I don't know nobody, and I don't like guys. Guys annoy me, right? <laughs> they just do. Flat out, they annoy me. And women are women, right? So I remember I met this shorty, um, fast forward. She became a badass chick, and she ended up marrying this white Irish cat who's a lawyer. And I need lawyers in my life. That's one of my friends. Mm -hmm. And she would always thank me till this day, like, thanks for showing me different shit and doing different things. And it's not like I was smashing her by any means. It was just like a cool situation because she was just a cool chick who I knew could change. If she changed her environment, she would change her life. Mm -hmm. So that was before I met you, by the way. That's yeah. that full circle. That's what you were talking about, changing your environment. Mm -hmm. Change, always change your environment. Mm -hmm. Because people want to be like, I want to get out the hood. Then motherfucker move. Yeah. For real. I want. I hate my job. Then motherfucker quit. Right, right. <laughs> and now, Back then, it was all about, you need this body. Now, because sure. people like you, me, whatever, were changing that mindset to be like, this chick is bad because she has a bad voice. Don't worry about her fucking body. Right. And uh, you know now, I mean? yeah, it's more accepted now. You know, Before you had to be a fucking size two with triple D titties and exactly. da, 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 da. I mean, still you know? now. I mean, you, not you, as you much. You can get it. You can yeah, go get it. Much. Yeah, now. now you can go pay for it. Yeah. <laughs> so little Birdie told us that you had a show. Oh, shit. See, that was an off the cuff question. Because yes. you had given me on my <laughs> Yahoo Mail. That's how old I am. I still have Yahoo Mail, people. <laughs> You know what I mean? I got rid of AOL.com. Yes, but, uh, yes, yes. One step up. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. So I didn't have this question coming. Okay, so check this out. So wifey is in the entertainment world, right? I'm not going to mm. mention who she is on her Instagram. Also, I don't do social media, by the way, people, either. Don't Instagram me. Asked. Don't FaceTime me. Don't do no, none face of that shit. No, he say uh, no uh, it, face space. No face space, no Insta stamp. I'm, I'm, doing this shit. I'm a grown fucking man. I'd rather meet somebody in person and shake their I hand. I love it. I love it. I ain't mad at you. Know? Um, so yeah, so um, wifey's in the entertainment business and whatnot, and I've been on video sets, music sets, this and that, and I'm just I, I don't I don't I don't I don't I don't knock that world, but I ain't my world, you know. I'm like mm -hmm. I like I'm, I'm construction and shit, so um, it's not I'm not, I'm not impressed by that world. Um, but she, we had a house, and she's like they're gonna redo this part of my house, and I wanted to get this fireplace. I already had the vision of. I'm a, I'm a fucking psychopath. I'm gonna be honest with you guys. Not that, not that, not that I'm gonna kill people and stuff them in the trunk, but like I'll sit there and look at shit and draw it and envision shit, right? Mm -hmm. And then do and then and then I'll be like, all right, that's I'm gonna that do, engineering, right? Too. But I'm gonna be like, this is what I want. I'm not gonna settle for nothing less, right? So example, I would say like your motivated psychopath is like a little bit different. Than okay, that's a bad word. Just, you guys edit the show, so take that word out. <laughs> But I'm going I'm to give you a prime example. So I'm going to cut that time of time out on that show, and I'm going to go to this painting real quick. So when I first got to this house, I'm walking through it, and I'm like, you know what's going to go up there? It's going to be a biggie shot of him rolling blunts. 
That's the first. That's the reason I bought the motherfucker. And my wife was like, "What? Whatever. She likes the pool. She likes this and this and that." Fast forward, I know your daughter is so fucking talented. Yes, big ups to Art by Queen B. Hundred percent. Plug that. And um, that's the only person I was gonna get to do this. So when I'm like, "Hey, I got this new crib. Come over." Your mom's came over. Your sister came over. Mm-hmm. Your daughter came over. And I'm like, "Hey, watch this. I'm gonna do this thing on here." And your daughter was like, "Ah." I'm like, "Check this out, woman." Fast forward, your daughter comes over, I'm like, I want this picture, she hand draws this, people, hand draws this, that's a true artist, doesn't mm-hmm. fucking photoshop, she hand draws it for the 10th time, <laughs> took her like four or five months, charged me X, I'm not gonna fucking put her business out there, but, <laughs> but it it's reasonable. Best, yeah, it was the best, like, it was her first job, of her first mural, and she wrote it down, she wrote down that she wanted to do a mural. Yeah, I remember that, you remember that, she said she, I, she's like, I want to envision me doing a mural. Fast forward, like two months later, I'm like, hey, have your daughter come do this mural. I love it. I've love always it. wanted the biggie over my fireplace, overlooking my whole crib. Mm-hmm. Again, the inspiration I talked about earlier, but yada, yada, now we're full circle. So I want to make sure I plug that yeah. in, that your daughter does some bomb ass shit. And the best part is, people, she's a true artist. I've known her for eight years. She's probably said 42 words to me. <laughs> She but lives, I love her. Because she literally, like, she's an she artist. She, she has paint. no. Yeah, oh, anytime I've ever seen her, she's painting. Yeah. yeah. I told Shorty, like, hey, a bunch of my homies want paintings done and this and that. But the true artist, she is like, eh, right, I'll get around to it. <laughs> I'm like, okay. No, because she, because she, she, she's in her, she's got like a million paintings in her head. Yeah. Right. So, so I ain't got time now, for your homies painting. Now she, no, she's like, I, she has time, but she's, she, what she's doing, which I think is totally amazing, is she takes the canvas out, draws a picture. And just keeps drawing all the canvases. Wow. And then she goes and grabs one and paints it that day. Oh, that's why I feel the day. And then grabs the other one. Paints. Yeah, so she's painting cool. like 10 paintings at one time. Yeah. So. Do you think she'd do like a Kurt Cobain one? She'll do whatever. Oh, that would be hard. Kurt Cobain? Want. He was a gangster. Whatever you yes, want. Whatever he you was want. a gangster. He would have been like the perfect future ex. Like boyfriend. Yes. Did you hear what you said? Future ex. I know. So back to this fucking uh, show thing that I did with the wife. It was a hundred hours of film, and I hated every hour of it. But we did the show. The wife wanted me to do the show. Blah blah blah. And then they were just like, "Oh my god, that's your husband." This and this and that. Da, da, da. And they're, they're like, "You wanted me. Now you got me. Now and deal you got with me. the real me. I'm right. here." Right. Anyway, but like I said, oh, yeah. of course, I'm we were watch. season one, episode one. Why do you think? Because we were. I was just so raw with it. Yeah. 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 Sure you hooked him in. Yeah, you pulled in the whole season. We want to give you a gift um, because I I feel like you live a life of no regrets. Mm. And I think that's what, that's a part of my motto for Trap Boot Camp. Mm-hmm. You know, self-awareness, definitely living a life of no regrets. Can and I that's add to that? You, yes. And no excuses. That's right. Have a solution, not an excuse. That's, that's right. my fucking that's motto. Right. And definitely, you, de- you definitely do have a solution. You definitely try to help us. With all of our solutions today, <laughs> with our setup, I love it. So uh, I wanted to present you with a gift. Oh my goodness, I think I was going to get it. It's yeah, really you, touching. You, no, you Thank really you do get that. a gift I because I really do love you and I really care. And you, Ooh, I will burn you that. actually do live a life of no regrets. Oh, that's badass. All right, so this is a candle handcrafted by moi. Oh, wow, handcrafted. Um, yes, okay. I sell these candles on our website, but it's also a candle that I want to present to you because I know you live a life of regrets. No, no regrets. regrets. No. A life of no, no regrets. regrets. And what's and the smell? The smell. Oh, let me. Let nice. me. I gotta always read this to the people. So no it's regrets. black, amber, and plum with wraps it evergreen spice and a hint of fruit into a festive Damn. and inviting fragrance oil. The top notes are cypress and fir, and they give a hint of the outdoors. A whole dark plum adds a touch of sweet nectar, saffron, cinnamon, enhances the spite and plum note, which a warm and smoky incense base. Elevate any space with the warm nuance of black amber and plum. The candle is live a life of no regrets. Please, you guys, go to our online. Yeah, if you want to look like this guy. <laughs> Men, get this candle when a chick comes over, be like, baby, don't regret what you're about to do tonight. Ah! <laughs> you know what I mean? And like that shit. Hey, Men. That's the commercial. That's the commercial right there. <laughs> Men, like that shit. Be like, like baby, you ain't going to regret drip. nothing tonight. Yeah. You got to make one that turns into like sex wax or, or like, uh, you know what I'm talking about? You know what? You on to something. Yes, I am. You are you know on I mean? to something. This is, we, this is, this is why we... This is so, men, have a bucket work. of ice. If you don't know, go watch Bill Bellamy's How to Be a Player and have this candle. <laughs> if you don't know. <laughs> and sure, drip it on them. Like See, yeah. we got the little diamond at the top because like you live that. a diamond life. I appreciate life. it. You know what I mean? You do I live a diamond that. life. And then here we have... Straight from Versace. Straight from Versace. <laughs> Versace brand trap boot camp sweater. Donatella, don't sue them for this fucking plugs. Yes. <laughs> Donatella, don't I sue know. them. I know. 
But these Just actually, um, <laughs> these go together. Oh, these the candle. Oh and shit, they match. They match. That light blue is hard. Yes. So you have this, and then you, and we have a smoke. Uh, what do you call it? a foot soap that I'm gonna send you? I didn't bring out for a foot soap. Yeah, but it also they all. Men, go get your feet done. I go once a month with the wife. I take champagne, and we go get our feet done. Yeah. 100%. Did you know foot fetish is one of the top most popular fetishes? So men. Take care of your shit. I agree, hundred uh, percent. I very much appreciate you. Yeah, love you, love you, please. and I will wear this till please. it fades. And it if it fades, so I'll still wear comfy. it. All right. Um. So definitely, you guys can get the Trap Bootcamp apparel on www.trapbootcamp.com. You already know what it is. We got a classic oversized hoodie. We have different um, sizes and colors. We have camo brown, beige, and green, yeah, and we got this green. baby blue. Okay. Your support helps us to keep the show going. And get this up. That's right. Okay. Nice, very nice. Um, so you get to, shuffle? yes, she's going to shuffle the cards, and you the will get to pick shuffling. two cards and random cards. We're not gonna, we don't know what they are, and okay. then you get to give two honest answers to the questions, okay? That's cool. All right. Uh, All right, so pick two? Yeah. Oh, right. so, uh, yeah, there I'm going to pick However one. You wanna, oh, spread so it out, yeah. In, well, I like to cut my cards and then pick out. Yeah. You know okay, me? well, then cut it three times. No, 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 no. I'm saying I'm going to cut and pick. So um, in right. tarot cards, you should um, pick with your left hand. Oh, I didn't know that. Mm -hmm. So let me get my shiny wrist out there. Yes, for the exactly. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Actually, That's like, hey, yeah. yeah. All right, yeah. so now what? And I pick this card, okay? Sure. Okay, right. And I do it again? Yeah, why not? All right. We need honest Honest answers. Am I not gonna give you that? Come on. I know man. you do. <laughs> I know you are, but they might. Well, you never know. Most of the time, these cards are what they need to be. Exactly. Okay. But you, you read one, then I'll read one. Okay. Yes. Okay. Yes, so you yes, take yes. take the one you want. I'll yeah. upside down one. Ready? Yep. Go for it. Go for no, Sam goes first. So Sam this goes one first. is about love. Nice. Ooh. I love love. Um, what you know about love? Not much. Um, pop smoke. <laughs> pop smoke. I don't plug. know about Rest love. in peace, sir. <laughs> what makes you feel loved? Wow, what makes me feel loved? Mm. Women make me feel loved. Oh, okay. I love women to death. Everyone will know that from the day I wake up to the day I die. My grandmother raised me, my sisters, my mother. I love you. Mm. I love you. I just met you. Thank you. I love my wife the most. She's my of best course. friend. Yeah. Um, yeah, just hanging out with women. I, you guys are the most intriguing life form on this planet to me. Mm -hmm. Fuck an awesome looking fish, a colorful fish. Fuck a giraffe, fuck a shark. I just love a woman. I love Why that. do you think what you think? Why do you do what you do? Why do you say what you say? Da, 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 da. I just love that. Like, Hence why all my friends in LA, I came here with no friends whatsoever except my girlfriend at the time, which is my wife now. Um, and all my friends have become women, mm -hmm. right? Yeah. I have one guy friend. I roll around with just women. Like, If, if I show up to a restaurant, I'd be five women deep all the time, six women deep, whatever. <laughs> and it'd be my wife running the show. Yeah. And we Got just it. hang out and it's just, I just, I feel love when I'm around women because like you guys till this day will teach me shit, show me shit, and vice versa. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? So attention, I attention, rewind and rewatch exactly what he just said. <laughs> <laughs> I know, we're gonna, we, that's definitely a clip. That's definitely yeah, a clip. That's gonna be a long hashtag. <laughs> <laughs> so I feel most loved when I'm around women who I love back. Okay. Oh, I Make love it simple. That. Beautiful. I love that. Beautiful. Okay, right. so what is your idea of a perfect day? A perfect day? A perfect day. Wow, great question. 
<laughs> you know what? Today. No, um, perfect day to me is just waking up and having freedom. And the way I, the way I say freedom, money is not everything, right? Money to me on my list is number three. Now maybe number four. Freedom is number one because I can wake up every day and work when I want to, work when I don't want to, um, do what I want when I want. And my wife has the same freedom because she runs her own businesses. My perfect day is making sure that you have freedom in your life because we come from a culture being minority folk, work too hard, harder than, you know, I, I, I'm going to just be, I'm, you know, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to take my glasses off for this shit. Uh -oh. I work in an all male, white dominated world, right? Which are 45, 55 year old dudes, which are great. Cool. You know, they accept me, whatever. And in my company, it's only me and another cat who lives in Miami, big ups to my, you know what I'm talking about. And we have to sit there and live in their world. They yeah. can never live in our world. Right. Never. Right. Okay. But we got to accept their world. And what I say by that is that we got to deal with their shit. And they have ultimate freedom. Because they can get a DUI. They can fucking do this. They can do that. And they'll be all right. Don't worry about it. You know what I mean? Hands exactly. clean. White glove crime. Because yeah. it's like, oh, shit. My, my gloves are white. They're going to be clean the whole rest of my life. Because I come from the white society. Mm -hmm. So I'm not trying to be racist by any means. No, by, no, by no means. But it's just the reality but, of... But of, because of you... you yeah. Okay, so my wife is black. Just so everyone knows. I'll put that out there. Right? So my thing, my happiest thing, I have freedom in my life. Mm -hmm. With me, that's the best day. It's just I have I freedom that. every day I wake up. I love that. I love Beautiful. that. My wife is so different than me, and I love her to death, and she knows this, that she's. I'm loud, she's quiet. I drink, she don't. I cuss, she don't. And I always tell her, I take care of high-level shit, you take care of low-level shit, we meet in the middle. And she's happy with everything and who I am. And I'm yeah. a grown man who I... She knows from jump. Like, I'm going to go out with Kiwana for dinner. Cool, have a good time. Yeah. You want to come? No, I can't. Cool. She's not the type where she's jealous or whatever, by yeah. fact. And that's the relationship part, is that's what's hard in L.A. Is like, relationships in L.A. are very hard. Yeah. Very, very hard. Yeah. For the reason that, whether you're man, man, female, 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 man, is that everyone in L.A. wants something. Yep. When I met my wife, she didn't ask for shit. Yeah. I like, hey, let me do this, let me do that. I, was, I said, I'm a clown, right? I was, I was, okay. I was a clown with her. <laughs> I'm a clown. No, I wasn't a clown. I was a clown with her because I wanted to try to impress her, but she's like, eh, whatever. You know what I mean? Yeah. That's, uh, that's different. Right. That's different. That's probably why she is where she is. I don't want to plug it, but let check this shit out. When I first met her, she was dating a famous singer, right? Mm -hmm. And I met her, and I'm like, let's go do this, let's do that. So this motherfucker was blowing up her phone while I'm kicking it with her, and I saw the name, the picture. I'm like, fuck that guy. <laughs> like, get with an engineer. Don't get with a singer. <laughs> And she was like, okay. That I means she was smart. <laughs> she was hella smart because the singer probably broke right now. So to the brown and black kids out there, my message, PSA statement is like, everyone want to be a rapper. Everyone want to be a singer. Da, da, da. Engineers ain't bad. They make good bread. Yeah. Lawyers make hella bread. My, my other choice of, of job would have been a lawyer because growing up, my best friend, this white Italian cat who ran a neighborhood was like, bro, all your friends are criminals. If you're a lawyer, you got fucking business for life. Yeah. How did you know? get this much confidence? Like how, like what... Give me some. Mm. <laughs> confidence. Put someone in a goodie bag. Let's go. Yeah, where did the confidence come yeah. from? Other than you know what? Con America's, I mean, I've been, I've been blessed to be at, let's say, fuck, 20, 20 plus countries and stuff. And yeah, America's a great place, but there's better places, right? Yeah. So my end game is not to be living in America. I want to retire, take my wife. So that's my end goal. But you don't get there without a thought process. And to answer your question, the ambition, the drive, the hustle comes from like, it's like, like you have nothing to lose. Like, like I, I come from nothing. And like, what do I have to lose if I just go out and try right. to go get it? But get it right. Everybody get it right. Yeah, get because it right. getting it wrong will lead you to wrong. You yeah. know what I mean? I had a lot of friends that have way more money than me, but now they went to jail. Now their fucking record's fucked up. Now this and this and that. And the confidence comes from literally my grandma, to be honest with you. Yeah. So she was She was always like, my you grandma. Good no, no, no. My my grandma. Like, no, 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 I, no, not that. But my grandma was a cheat. Like I said, she's ninety three years old. I still fly every day, every two times a year to see her. She still packs a pistol. I still pick her up in hot cars. We still go to the casino. We still hang out. <laughs> we still do gangster shit. But she always taught me math, numbers, and right. money, uh -huh. yeah, and yeah. always know how to get it. Mm. Yeah. So she always taught me those lessons. So isn't and life's not about money because you can have it. And I'm comfortable. I, so I, I like the word freedom and comfort. Right. So yeah. as a man, I tell men all the time, there's somebody who's bigger than you, better than you, got more money than you. Be confident in who you are and the value you bring to the table. The other day, some chick asked me this, right? She's like, what value do you bring to the table? I'm like, woman, I am the table. So yeah. be the table, men. Yeah. I love that. That's a quote, too. Yeah. We, we got there's hella quotes from this so show today, y'all. Yeah. what you said. It was like, uh, what do you have to lose by being confident or like just going after it? I think that's what do you have beautiful. To lose? beautiful and simple. What do you have to lose? You don't have Nothing. anything to lose, Nothing. no. 
So this is a perfect point for us to end the show. I'm so thankful for you, Ramira. I, this is a perfect way for me to like pay homage to your you as your friendship and show mm. people how interesting you are because even though you have this interesting view on relationships <laughs> and you're you're open with your situation, I think women need more of that. Yeah. You know what I mean? And we need to be able to accept and understand men in a in a that have a different outlook on relationships. Yeah. I know that I, I know that when I, I can honestly say that when we first met, I was like, this guy, whatever, you know? But as we got to talk and we I learned about who you are as a person, you're just a dynamic person and you have so many levels and so many layers and I'm 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 thankful that I'm able to celebrate them. So thank you for being on the show today. I'm so Happy to have you here. I appreciate and it. And I hope I had a blast. come back, blast. come back, come back. I don't do this shit too often, but I had a blast. And honestly, I, and Miss I, Amy. I, and I've also, thank you. Miss um, Amy. No, I'm uh, fucking with you, Sam. I know. <laughs> uh, but no, I would say the thing I learned from you very quickly is um, just be yourself, right? Like, 100%. Like, if that's what you are, like, look at what, where you're going to be. Confidence, Versace. <laughs> um, you know, Biggie. Whatever. Biggie. It's great. 100%. It's great. Like, Biggie's a G. Rest in peace, Biggie. And now you are my friend too, ma'am. So today was a win. When you asked me what's my best day, freedom is awesome, but I got a new friend. Aw, thank you. Follow me, follow me, follow me. And that's it, not or not. Yeah.